All right, guys, Mike here. Um, as I may have mentioned in a previous video, um, I didn't I didn't necessarily like these uh, show me lights. They were okay. They they just weren't bright enough. The tint on the back window, the factory tint, is is pretty dark. So uh, I decided to get the, put my strobes back in that I had in the Jeep, which were plenty bright, which is kind of opposite of what. Uh, people have been doing because normally they've been replacing the strobes with the um, with LEDs so um, I found these linear micro thin uh, linear strobes and I've been putting them in here so I got them mounted up here I know it's a Bit of a mess. I'm trying to get these wires through this this gland here. Uh, let's see if we can just get that area um, so that I can get them down into this area down here. It's really bright up. Um, I know it looks a bit of a mess, but I'll clean all that up, and I'm going to put the controller down there. I'm also going to pull the LED tail lights that didn't really work that well. Um, the LED uh, hideaways, from rather, and replace them with strobes. Um, they're mounted in the red area here. Um, I'm sorry, the clear area. So we needed to get red strobes. All right, I uh, took the tail light out. I took this, uh, I believe it's an Abrams uh, LED light that really didn't work well in this application. And I put in the strobe. So I'll go ahead and put it back in the truck. So I used one of the existing wires that I had going to the LEDs that were going down through the gland. Um, and I connected this green wire to it and I used that to pull the strobe line through. So now I have this green wire that's connected to the red one. And what I'm going to do is use the green one to pull it back through so I can pull the second one. Alright, I got the two strobe lines through the gland, I'm out. Um, it wasn't easy, but I'm gonna leave these in the in through the through the gland because if I got them through, I might as well leave them there. Because um, eventually, maybe I'll put some some LEDs in the end there. So, so next thing to do is put that up. I gotta feed the rest of the line through there and put it up. All right, I got that in there. All mounted up there. Glands all through there, and all the cables come out. Get that focus there, and they'll come down the the D pillar here, and it's that mess where I will install the controller. This is a Wellen strobe controller I had in my Jeep. New, they're like $300. I got this one used off eBay for 30 bucks. Great little controller. Uh, it's a CSP 690. It'll do six different strobes. It basically has two zones. But one zone has two strobes. The other zone has four, zo has four strobes. And they can control them independently. So the two zones I have wired up, uh, one of them is wired to this existing switch that I had for the rears, uh, the rear LEDs. Uh, the other one is to a wire that runs up there, but I haven't hooked it up to anything yet. So one of the features of the interceptor is that it has this little thing here, and it's got a 70 amp battery stud. So I connect it with a little fuse there. And ran that over to the uh, strobe controller, and that provides power. So I'm finally getting around to edit this video together and realize that I never actually finished shooting it. So I'm out here gonna shoot some video of uh, the final product and fill you in on some of the gaps. And oh, look, a rainbow! All right, so the controller's mounted back there. I cleaned up all the wires that go forward. As I mentioned in this video, the controller has a total of six outputs, strobe outputs. Uh, they're grouped in two zones. One of them has two outputs, the other one has four outputs. Um, so I used the one with four outputs 
that uh, so for the two ta the two talite strobes and then the two linear strobes there. So that's a total of four. They have a nice sequence to them uh, that kind of interact with each other. Something that you didn't see in the in the previous video because I had a problem um, is these nano. Uh, I'm sorry, Lamphus nano. Are these na are these Lamphus nano flares? Um, just for some side coverage, and they are also connected. Oh, actually, they have their own switch up front, which I will show you in a second. These are the four watt nano flares. Uh, they're split between red and amber. So going up front, I'll show you my new uh, radio stack. Well, the radios haven't changed. It's just the switches. I did uh, some custom switches. You can get whatever you want on these switches. Uh, you can get change the logos. You can change whatever the text you want. So I got the front strobes, the rear strobes, the side strobes. The APRS button is a three-way switch. Uh, it's an on-off-on switch. The lower position will uh, supply the APRS with uh, ignition power, and the upper position will provide uh, the APRS with battery power so I can turn it on. The middle position allows me to turn the APRS off and make sure it doesn't transmit. All the radios here are connected to an, uh, an accessory source to turn them on. Uh, when the, the radio override is in the down position, uh, that's where the signal comes from. But if I want to leave the car off and uh, have the radios on, I can push this on and that will force the, uh, the radios to be run off battery. Uh, these switches actually light up uh, when you turn them on. They have a red on the logo. And if I turn the lights on, they match the blue in the rest of the car. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, they're actually pretty neat. They're not, they're, they're about $20 a switch with the custom uh, logo. And I'll put a link in the description. Alright, so I finally got around to installing these. Um, I ended up taking the whole front bumper off. Um, this whole thing comes, the, the bumper and the uh, grill come off at once. Uh, these are Wellin Microns uh, with uh, smoke lenses, uh, not the clear, and they're split white amber. One of the reasons I took the bumper off, well really the main reason I took the bumper off, aside from being almost impossible to get behind there, is to install the 100 watt speaker down there. Uh, it's behind the grill, can't really see it from far away. Um, it's not a Wellen. Wellens are very expensive. Uh, I found a, another version and I'll put a link in the description. Uh, it sounds just as good, it got re good reviews. And uh, that goes along with a Wellen Power Air Horn. I got the, uh, the version that does not have the uh, PA. It's not a siren. It's just a power air horn. It's perfectly legal before you ask. That is connected to our little button here. It's kind of hard to get to. It's much easier just to get to the horn. The horn is just the regular horn. Alright guys, well that's about it for this video. Like, comment, subscribe, you know the drill. I hope you enjoyed it. I got another video coming. Uh, I have a product I bought and I'm going to review it. It's going to be interesting. So, stay tuned.